Welcome everyone and thank you for joining this presentation. My name is Simon Bellas and I will present you our work about deep learning based porosity segmentation in X-ray CT measurements of polymer additive manufacturing parts. First, I will start with a brief introduction about additive manufacturing and X-ray CT. Then I will explain the methodology that we used and the results that we obtained. And to finish, I will summarize our conclusions and our future work that we are planning to investigate. But first, we will start with the introduction. Additive manufacturing is increasingly being used to produce end-use functional parts. And the main reasons, therefore, are the enormous design freedom that we can obtain with additive manufacturing and the fact that you can cost efficiently produce lot size one products. It is therefore very useful to produce mass customized products where each part is specifically adapted to each customer, like for example, in the ear hearing aids. But one of the main challenges there is that each part is unique and it becomes therefore very, and is therefore very difficult to use some statistical quality control methods to perform the quality control of a complete batch based on a few samples. So there is an industrial demand for a very fast and a very flexible quality control <coughs> to perform the quality control of each part individual. And this is where X-ray computed tomography can play a very important role because it can measure both external features and internal features of the part and perform a non-destructive quality control of the, of the material to check if there are some defects or some voids where we don't want them and where they can influence the mechanical properties. But one of the main drawbacks of X-ray CT is a very large acquisition time and is therefore limited to high-end parts. How does X-ray CT work? We have our object and we place it on a rotation stage in, stage in between the X-ray source and the X-ray detector. X-rays are then emitted from the X-ray source and they will penetrate through the object. The object will attenuate those X-rays and the remaining X-ray intensity is then measured by the X-ray detector. This way we acquire one radiograph, the object is then rotated and the process is repeated until the full angular range of 360 degrees is covered. For a high quality scan, we need in between 2000 and 3000 projections. And based on these projections, we can then reconstruct a three-dimensional representation of our object. Then we can start analyzing this three-dimensional model. But before we can do that, we have to segment our model. Uh, we have to decide which pixels belong to the material and which pixels belong to the voids or to the background. With conventional segmentation techniques, we calculate a specific threshold value based on the gray level histogram. But if we start changing the settings of our CT system, like for example, uh, reducing the number of projections, we see that the peaks of the material and the, and the peak of the, the air become less pronounced and that it becomes very difficult to calculate a specific threshold value. But if we look into the grayscale images, we can see that there are still some defects inside and that is the reason why we investigated deep learning segmentation techniques to see if we can reduce the number of projections to reduce the acquisition time and still be able to, to properly segment those low quality scans. The process that we actually, the, the, what we basically do is we have a low quality image and we feed this to the network. The network will then, during, during the training, the network will then segment this image and compare it with a high quality scan that will represent, that will represent the ground truth. And based on the difference between those two images, the network will start updating the weights inside the network and will reduce the difference between those two images. What we need is we need a low quality scan, we need a high quality scan that represents the ground truth, and we need a network with a loss function that we can that we can optimize. I will first start by explaining how we acquired uh, the data and then uh, the network that we used. So we scanned a polymer laser centered cube with a Nikon X-ray CT system. Uh, and the cube has a size of 10 millimeters. And we, we started gradually reducing the number of projections. And as you can see, we acquired one high quality scan with 3000 images and then five different low quality scans with a uh, number of projections of 1500 until 100. 
to perform the alignment between the high quality and the low quality scans. We attached three metal spheres to the support of the cube. And now we can make sure that the voxels in the high quality scan and in the low quality scan are representing the same part of the object. From these slices, we cropped images of 128 by 128 pixels. In this case, we created a database of 2000 training images, 1000 validation images, and 1000 test images. The network that we used is a UNET, net, a UNET work architecture. Um, but before training the network on all the different scans, we first investigated if we could optimize the network architecture by changing some parameters, like for example, changing the number of filters inside the convolutional layers, or by changing the depth of the network. In this case, we combined those two parameters and we then have nine different configurations uh, that we trained on two different scans. All the networks are trained with the binary cross entropy loss function and an atom optimizer. Before we, we can dive into the results, I will first explain how we evaluated the quality of our segmentation. So after training the network, we segment 1000 test images and we binarize the output of the network with the step function. Uh, everything below 0 0.5 becomes zero and will represent material. Everything above 0 0.5 will become one and will represent a pore. We have then two binary images that we can compare and one metric that we used is a Jacquard index. This gives us an overall idea about the quality of the segmentation. And then we also uh, calculate the porosity, the pore distribution, and the probability of detection to have a better understanding about what is going on with all the different pore sizes. So back to the nine different configurations that we trained on two different scans. We trained it on the one with 1500 projections and one with 400 projections. And what we observe is if we increase the number of filters, we see that the quality uh, of the segmentation remains constant or that it increases. Except for the normal architecture trained on scan four, if we dare increase the number of filters, we see that the quality uh, of the segmentation decreases. And this is probably caused by the increase in number of trainable parameters and the increase of noise inside the training data. From these results, we chose the light network architecture with 46 convolutional layers as the optimal network because it had two times the highest checkered index value and it uh, takes the benefit of increasing the number of filters, increases the, the quality of the segmentation. We trained on this network on all the different scans ranging from 1500 to 99 uh, from the scans with 1500 to 99 projections. And this is a qualitative example. In the top row, you can see the grayscale images uh, and the network will segment those images. In the second row, you see the segmentation results of an absolute threshold algorithm. And in the third row, you will see the segmentation results of the, the neural network. And the main conclusions that we can draw is that in the neural network, there is less noise present. And there are, uh, if we start to reduce the number of projections, we see that there are uh, less small pores detected. And also uh, the pores in the scans with very limited uh, number of projections tend to become more circular shape. To make it a bit more quantitative, we calculated the Jacquard index for all the different low quality scans and we compared them with Otsu threshold segmentation algorithm. And what we see is that there is an increase in the quality of the segmentation compared to an Otsu and compared to Otsu preceded by a medium filter. From the, right, from the figure at the right, we can conclude that uh, small, if we decrease the number of projections, smaller pores are less likely to be detected. If we take a closer look to the pore distribution, we see that uh, in scan five and in scan six, pores uh, tend to become larger. And this is caused by uh, pores that start to connect with each other due to the high angular rotation during the acquisition of one radiograph. And if we 
take a look uh, to the porosity values of the deep learning segmentation, we see that from scan 2 to scan 4, there is a decrease in the porosity. And this is caused by the less detected smaller pores. And but if we uh, take a look at scan 5 and scan 6, there is again an increase. And this is then caused by the larger pores due to the pores that start to connect with each other. To summarize, we evaluated nine different network configurations and chose the optimal one. We trained this optimal network on five low quality scans ranging with a number of projections ranging from 1500 until 100. And we see that the deep learning segmentation improves the segmentation of low quality XAT measurement, but there is a limitation to how far we can reduce the number of projections. And it was in this case 400. Uh, but this already gives a time reduction factor of eight. One of the limitations is that we segment the pores in the two-dimensional slices. Now we are not using the three-dimensional information between consecutive slices. So our future work will therefore focus on evaluating three-dimensional deep learning networks and investigating the influence of reduced exposure time to decrease the acquisition time but this we, ha we have to compensate this by increasing the source power but th and this will generate more blur in, in the data. And besides that, we're also aiming to make a more in-depth comparison of different network architectures. Thank you for attending this presentation and I'm pleased to answer your questions.